Happy Rails to you. Welcome back, my friends. Happy Rails to you. It's good to see you again. Thanks for watching the channel and the videos. Sometimes they go real fast and sometimes they're slow. Happy Rails to you. Thanks for watching. Ching. Well, hello everyone. Welcome back. It's G-Man, my world, 67. Uh, well, what you have here is my project uh, that I've been planning on doing for several years and never took the time to sit down and put it together or try to implement it. And... I'm finally at the point where I decided I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, attempt to make me one. And this is going to be my version of the Galloping Goose. Uh, I'm going to call it the Flying Duck. And uh, I'm afraid it's not going to run very fast, I don't think. Um, but I'm going to use be using a... Uh, to start out with, if I can get this motor going uh, and get a little power to it, um, I'm going to be using a motor out of a Marks hand car. And uh, at one time I had several Marks hand cars. Um, I'm down to the last two uh, that I have. And so. Um, this one needed some work, so I decided to go ahead and use this motor uh, that it would work better uh, for this project. Um, this was a junk hand car anyhow, and uh, might as well use it. Now's the time. So what I've got here is a Tootsie Toy body. And as you can see, I've started to modify it. I've took out the, the real wheels, rear wheels and uh, started to close this in. I'm going to do the same thing on this other side. I'll block off this wheel well and uh, paint them. Try to paint it uh, the same color as the running board. Or I'll paint it brown. Um or gray, whatever I end up painting the engine color will be, uh, the motor car will be. Um, I've got a two-wheel truck on the front of it for right now, uh, and this seems to work pretty good. I might change it and go to the four-wheel truck, and it would be more um, authentic. In that case, to uh, in comparison to the uh, real Galloping Goose, which they, I believe, only had four wheel trucks in the front. Um, Mike's Train House, and there's been um, a couple of others in HO anyway that's done this over the years, and uh. Theirs all had four-wheel trucks. I've been studying theirs. And uh, so, anyway, I'm going to do my version of it. I just cut down this B&O boxcar. I really hated to do that, but it's the only one I had handy right now. All the junk boxcars I've got, but they're all in boxes. And they're all primarily under the layout. And uh, I can't, still can't lift up too many heavy boxes or anything and move them around. So, uh, I had this one uh, where it was accessible. And uh, like I said, this was really a nice, uh, this was really a nice car. Uh, so I hated, I really hated to, to do this. But anyway, I cut it down and uh, this is going to be my box. Or the rear end of my car. Now, once they're done, 
give you an idea. This is probably too high. But I give you an idea of how this will look. Once it's done, this is up here on that's down here. Not gonna work. <clears throat> Something like this. Uh. This is a Mark's box car, by the way. You know me, guys, I pretty much use all Marks parts, if I can. But it's got a Marks a box car. Over here, I'm working on the motor. You see, uh, got it apart, cleaning it. I need new brushes. These are those tiny brushes. And... Uh, so I cleaned them. They're tiny, tiny. Best I could clean them. And uh, <clears throat> clean the armature. And so I've got a spot. And I cleaned the inside of it also. You probably can't see it. But as my uh, granddaughter used to say, it's clean, clean, clean. Okay. So I'm going to clean up this <clears throat> brush plate. And uh, reassemble it. I also had to do a rewiring job on this. And it had some wiring problems. Hopefully I've got them solved. Uh, and when I... And the nature of this old wire... Um, these wires, they just got the one thin wire in there. And they're really hard to work with. They break off easy. And these wires are so short. I might replace them later on. But <clears throat> once you break them off a couple of times, or accidentally cut them off a couple of times, uh, they end up right across down the sides getting interfering with your <clears throat> armature or you have to set them on top like I've got it. So I put this piece of plastic in under because there's a little bare wire right here and a little bare wire on this side. <clears throat> that way they don't touch the casing. <clears throat> and I'll probably put a spot of um, hot glue uh, on top of them. I've got them soldered together. I don't know if you can tell or not. But they're soldered together. And I'll probably put a little hot glue uh, just, you know, on it to hold it in place. Clean the wheels up a little bit. They were really dirty. So they're a lot cleaner now than they were. Okay.
Okay, that's all I have for you for now. Uh, I'm still figure out how I'm going to assemble this. Uh, I think I'm going to make a plate for it. Uh, I've got to... Cut a hole in this chassis to mount this motor. Now I may leave this Marx coupler on, or I might change it out and put a uh, <clears throat> Online or a K line truck or a coupler on it. Like I say, I cut this down. Let me show you this real quick. And I'm still not done with it yet. I want to go back, I'm fill it in, I'm get it ready for paint, and then paint the whole thing. So I got a little work yet to do on that. <clears throat> I re uh, bent this chassis. I didn't cut any off of it. I just shrunk it down by bending my fold where I needed it to be able to go up into the boxcar firm like the back one. <clears throat> I left a little lip out here intentionally and I folded it back over. That gave me a little heavier plate. I'm gonna drill a hole as I already have a hole from where the truck sat in this originally. And I'm gonna drill a hole through this, through the shell, like as Marks did for the backside and put a screw in it. At least my, that's my plan. And it'll be held on both sides from the screw. Actually, once you get this on, you got the screw in the back, you probably really won't even need this front screw. This fits nice. And pops right in there. <laughs> But I'll probably put a screw in it anyway. Also, I might put a brace in here on the inside. As they built this brace here, I might put a brace in here. I have the brace that I cut out and it won't fit down. Yeah, so uh, this brace piece, without trimming all this off of it, won't fit down, like I said, on the inside of it. So we're not going to do it, deal with that brace. What I went ahead and did uh, was put brace strips in. I don't know whether you can see them or not white strips one on each side and one across the top right there and then there's one on this side and the light behind it is kind of hard to see it but there it is I'm gonna turn it that way nope Try to get a better view yeah, with the camera. Come over here. Hold on a minute, guys. Know what I'm
All right, so anyway, got that done. I drilled a hole in the end, and uh, I did go ahead and put that screw in the frame right here. And I just got done cutting out this piece. Marks. off of the uh, chassis and now we're going to fit the motor see if it works uh, I had to go through the motor again and ended up tearing it all the way down and uh, had to shift make some brushes for it the brushes were bad and we're going to try those brushes and see if they work or not Truck it, rear truck out of my way. Okay. Looks like I'm going to need to go back a little further. And I got to go ahead and cut my slots in my frame. So let me cut my slots in my frame. Sit right in the middle. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have to move his rear truck. Hoping I wouldn't have to do that, but not the case. There's other ways I could do that, like I took the front one off, but this is quicker. Okay. Yeah. In our front slots. Yeah, I think it fell out of slots. Ooh. Nope, that's good. Okay. Problem is with that is now our Yeah. 
so it's going to be just a little bit too high. So what we're going to do, 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 do. I think if I bend this in a ways. Set that down. And I can bring this back. Against the chassis. Bring it back a little more. And we'll put a nut in it under the screw down through our screw. Yeah. Coming up from the bottom. We'll put a nut in it to level this out. I think we'll be okay. That's it. Let me get busy. Well, I'm back, and uh, it's another day, and I've been working on this basically all day. Um, just wanted to share with you some of the things I got done uh, today, uh, before I, uh, so I can close this video out and uh, hopefully do a completion video on it. Um, in the next day or two but uh, so here's what we got done let's say I had to rebuild that motor got that motor rebuilt got it in get my file out of the way Got it in, as you can see. Uh, I had to make some more modifications. I changed the way that I was mounting the whole thing. Uh, I turned the direction of the motor around. Um, I prepared, went ahead and prepared the sledge. I was going to do this a little different. I had in mind and I found it was going to be easier to uh, make this go ahead and make just this area right here uh, on this ledge on the front of the box car um, the uh, point of uh, hookup for the uh, cab
Well, the motor cab. some of this stuff out of the way. All right, so there's the uh, motor and chassis. And here is, if you can see it, kind of hard to see. But right here, you see that hole right there? And then I uh, took some super glue and put a tiny washer over the top of the hole uh, to make a, a little small disc like uh, for that to uh, swivel on so that it doesn't rub directly on this. Uh, shelf all the time or this ledge all the time so we got that in got it going uh, you'll see it running in the next video just uh, went back over the uh, boxcar shell itself and uh, sanded it down some more sanded down the glue areas that I had glued uh, went ahead and made the impressions in uh, the catwalk up here so that it uh, looks very imprinted uh, like like the original um, and went ahead and put my side two side rails on for the sliding door which doesn't slide but um, when we cut this car down we lost those two uh, rail extensions and so i went ahead and put them on there. and the reason why i put them on this side of the door instead of this side of the door is because these are on this side of the door on this side of the box car and they should be opposite side of the door on the opposite side of the box car. Now this is the shorter side of the box side, car on this side, so this is short side. So they would extend from this rib, so they'd be one, two, three ribs over, uh, which would be basically uh, the width of the door. And the same here. So it had to just short fall a panel short of the ladder. One, two. And that's basically what we have. One, two. Two panels. So I'm letting this dry. Uh, no. Send it down some more. Tomorrow in the morning sometime. I need to get some other things done tomorrow, but I'm going to get back to it. I'm working on making a grill for the front of this, and of course I still got to make a uh, cow catcher, or whatever you want to call it, <laughs> for uh, the front of this also and uh, got my other wheel insert in so we got that hole plugged up and I built my hitch and what I did was took a piece of the uh, steel siding or aluminum siding that I had and folded it over, cut it at this uh, inch and about an inch and a quarter width, I think it was. Let's see. Hmm. 
not quite a quarter. Almost. And um, put a screw in it down here. Tighten it up real good. Brought it back uh, through the bottom of this surface is the latch that holds the bottom onto this car. And it protrudes up uh, about a sixteenth of an inch. And so uh, I put a hole in this. Also, I uh, made a tab. So I just slipped it down over that and kind of hooked it, glued it. This is also glued to these to this surface, and glued it. Put some glue around it there, and uh, to make sure it put a hold. And then I hot glued it when I got all done with it, uh, just to give it a little to cover it and to. Uh, help it stay on. Now there's no weight on this. I mean, you know, unless the guy just deliberately took it and flung it up against the wall or bent this down or snatched it off, uh, it's, it's pretty sturdy. It's not gonna just come apart. It's gonna take some force. So it's really solid. And uh, I wanted it to be solid because I didn't want it to be uh, something that if you picked up, you had to worry about this bending or this coming loose or coming out. I wanted it to be solid. So we got it solid. Um, looks pretty good. Uh, comes out. And then I put a screw down in it for a pin to go down into... This area on the chassis got stuff scattered everywhere, guys. All right. Like this. What did it move on me? It did slightly. And then when the shell comes down over top of it, and I'm putting this brace side uh, to the front, and so when the shell comes down over top of it. Um, it helps, well, the pin won't ride up anyway, but this will come up a little bit, and not even enough now, once the shell's on, to, to even worry about. I also slided out the shell, wish I could get a better angle, give me just a sec, okay. Also, shot it out, slide it out the shell so that um, get it around here so that there was room for this to turn. And I dovetail this, I didn't know whether I mentioned that or whether you saw that or not. Uh, I dovetailed the plate, the hitch. Um, so that it could turn easily and there's room in the hitch so that's great 
a piece of engineering there. A little more engineering. And let's see, I don't think I've done anything else to it. Trying to think. I don't think I've done anything else to it. Uh, still got to put, uh, whether I'm going to put a truck back here on this end or not. I noticed the galloping goose, uh, the real one, uh, the number two, I think it is. Maybe not. It's either the number two or the number five or the number three. I don't, I don't know. But one of them does not have a trailing hitch in the back. It's just like this. And so... Uh, I might just leave it like that. And as I said, mine's not going to be a goose. Mine's going to be a duck. Or maybe I'll even call it something else. I don't know. But for now, it's still a piece in productivity. Well, that's all I got for you right now, guys. Uh, real possible trailing truck in the back. Possible. Um, actually, fully assemble it. Paint it. Um, I think that's it. Once we get those things done, um, we should be done with it. All right. That's all I have for you for now. Um, didn't take any pictures while I was doing it. It was kind of complicated. <laughs> it took most of my time. Like I say, I spent all day just fabricating pieces for it and figuring out how I was going to do it. So, um, that's all for now. As always, if you enjoy working on your trains, uh, working on your hobby, working with your hobby, whether it be trains, uh, toys of any type, repairs, uh, golf, whatever it is, uh, you should really enjoy it and if you enjoy it half as much as I enjoy working on my trains and my layout and my toys and things uh, then you should have happy rails and remember as I've said once before or several times before um, trains run on the tracks but our life is often running on the rails. And so we've got to keep our hand to the throttle and our eye upon the rail. All right, guys. Bye for now. God bless. Bye.